Next, the author of a new bestseller talks with NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salman about the economic plight and social values of working class Americans. The book is already receiving a heated reception. The discussion is part of Paul's ongoing reporting, Making Sense of Financial News. It's not too dramatic to say this. We're losing a lot of what has made America exceptional as we become increasingly a, a class society in which a big chunk of the people on the bottom no longer behave in the ways that are essential for a self-governing free society. Conservative lightning rod Charles Murray, who wrote Losing Ground in 1984, blasting welfare programs for making poverty worse, co-wrote The Bell Curve in 1994, arguing that economic success comes increasingly from genetic differences in IQ. Both books offended blacks in particular. He returns to these themes in his latest bestseller, Coming Apart, which restricts its scrutiny to white people to emphasize the issue of class, not race. We have developed classes in this country that are different in kind from anything we have known before. The new super smart, super educated upper class is out of touch, says Murray. Tucked away in exclusive zip codes, he calls the super zips. But Murray reserves his actual anxiety for the 30% at the bottom. We have a new lower class that's large and growing that has fallen away from a lot of the basic core behaviors and institutions that, that made America work. That's because, he argues, they're less honest, less religious, less responsible than white working class people were half a century ago. Violent crime, for example, way up, at least as measured by arrest rates. In 1960, it was still, no nostalgia here, an age when you could leave your door unlocked, even in urban neighborhoods, even after the reductions in crime that we've seen since the 1990s you're still at about four to five times the level of violent crime in these neighborhoods that you had before. Regular worship, meanwhile, way down. If you define sort of the core religious population as being people who go to church regularly and uh, say they have a strong affiliation with their faith, you're down to 12 percent in uh, the white working class who have that kind of relationship to religion. But perhaps the widest gap over the past 50 years, says Murray, is in marriage rates. Is collapse too strong a word? I'm not sure, but it's really close to that. 1960, you've got about 94% of the upper middle class whites who are married, compared to about 83% of the white working class. It's the norm in both groups. You turn to 2010, you're still at 84% for the upper middle class. 84% married. Right. For the white working class, you're down to 48%. According to Murray, nearly half of all white working class kids are now born to single moms, who look at the dads and say, why should I marry these losers? You know, the guy who impregnated me was a nice guy, but uh, he, he can't hold on to a job. And that's because of a final piece of Murray's dreary data. Over the past 50 years, lower rung white males have left the labor force. You know, 1960, guys are supposed to work. I mean, that is as universal a social norm as there is. You don't work, you're a bum. And just about everybody either did work or was looking for work. Turn to 2008, before the recession. You're up to about one out of eight white working class males, ages 30 to 49, is not even looking for work. But as with Murray's previous books, the coverage has often been withering. And the main critique is that he's left out the most important factor in working class decline, economics. On the left, Salon.com's Joan Walsh mocked Murray's insistence on culture over economics, claiming her next book will be called Coming Together, How the White Working Class Woke Up and Realized the Right Now Thinks They're Dumb and Lazy Too. On the right, David Frum asked, how can you tell a story about the moral decay of the working class with the work part left out? What Murray's saying is, coming apart, you know, these people are, they're dissolute. As opposed to rich people. Thea Lee is deputy chief of staff at the AFL-CIO. 
go to go to any private school in Washington D.C. You know, take the level of, of drug use. You know, at a private high school. You know, I, or look at Bernie Madoff. I mean, I, I'm just trying to get my head around this idea of morality being the um, the purview of the, the wealthy, or the elite, and the intellectually accomplished. Besides, says Lee. If you look at the big economic picture in the United States, it's one of a weak labor market, wage stagnation and growing inequality. The U.S. economy is in a dead end right now because there's been too much focus on cutting costs, cutting labor costs, laying people off, making do with less. And in the end, what you see is an economy that's shrinking, that's failing, that's not providing uh, a middle class lifestyle. You really think it has nothing to do with all the jobs that have been shipped overseas and more importantly perhaps the technology that has made so many jobs obsolete? I don't see the relationship between the changing nature of the distribution of working class jobs and the increased dropout from the labor force. It's not as if assembly line jobs were so much fun and the jobs that are available now are so much less fun that you are discouraged from taking those jobs. No, they paid more, they paid way more. You aren't gonna fix it by bringing back unionized assembly line jobs. Instead, Murray advocates cultural changes, encouraging the lower class to emulate the more virtuous behavior of those above, who might as well be living on another planet. So clueless have they become about what's going on in the rest of the culture. You've got a quiz in the book. How thick is your bubble? The quiz, which you can take on our Making Sense website, measures upper class familiarity with working class America. Have you ever held a job that caused a body part to hurt at the end of the day? because my feeling is if you can't answer yes to that question, you are in big trouble in trying to understand the country you live in. Though Murray, Harvard grad, MIT, PhD, qualifies as what he calls an OES, an overeducated elitist snob, he grew up solidly in the middle in small town Iowa. Nothing whiter, he's called it. And he stayed close to mainstream America. Since 1989, he's lived in tiny Burkittsville, Maryland, way outside the Washington Beltway. The nearest town of any size, Brunswick, where Murray and his wife sent their kids to public school. I told him I had one final line of questioning. He suggested we stop in at Mommer's Diner to discuss it. To you, so many of the rewards in our society come from talent, which is, to a large extent, innate, right? right in the second half, okay? The first half, which says so many of the rewards in our society come from talent, if you're talking about money, yeah, but if you're talking about rewards in life, meaning deep satisfactions in life, vocation, that is having a job that you find satisfying, and marriage, and religiosity, and community, which are as accessible to people on the bottom of society as the top, those are still there as potential rewards since Murray denies that the lack of economic rewards are the cause of cultural yes. decline, he's not pushing any government economic solutions. It's a very well verified social science finding that government programs don't do a good job at solving the human problems that I'm discussing. So Murray says the upper crust should try to share their, or perhaps I should say our, superior virtues with those who have lost them. We have right now an upper class that will not say out loud, as, as elites really need to do in any society, this is a good way to live. This doesn't mean they're passing laws, it doesn't mean they're forcing people, they are setting a standard. And how do we do that exactly? Do the, the people just wander into a poor neighborhood and start uh, instructing people in how to you know, not have sex before marriage or... Again, the AFL-CIO's Thea Lee. I'm trying to imagine the picture of the, the wealthy elite sharing the benefit of their knowledge and superior situation with the less fortunate. And that just might not be that much fun. The, the way that social norms become social norms is not through any systematic process. It is through a, a, a flowering of an understanding within a culture. And here's the good news, Paul. I think these are ideas whose time has come. With the coming of coming apart, ideas that Charles Murray 
is doing everything he can to propagate. You can find out if you're living in a bubble by taking the quiz on our website's homepage.